So after taking a look at Tiny 11, which is a deep loaded version of Windows 11 running on the Ryzen 5 5500U, I wanted to check it out on a system that is quite a few generations older. So we're going to be trying Tiny 11 on this HP Elite Desk 705G4 running with a Ryzen 5 Pro 2400G. This is rocking 16 gigabytes of RAM and the system originally came with Windows 10. So now we're going to be trying it with Windows 11, though again, it is an extremely cut down version of Windows 11 and we're going to see if it can breathe some life into a old system like this because one of the benefits of this version of Windows 11 is the fact that it actually skips out the TPM2 and other hardware requirements that Windows 11 has that would normally keep a system like this from being updated to Windows 11 directly. So we're going to be testing out the performance of Tiny 11 on this system in comparison to the original Windows 10 install on Steam's top 10 most played games right now and starting off at the top of the list we have counter-strike global offensive this has consistently been the most played game on steam for years now and what's interesting is that in comparison to the windows 10 install that this originally came with we're actually seeing some performance regression when it comes to one percent lows they seem to fluctuate a lot trying to be somewhere in the mid 40s but eventually do end up coming down into the mid 20s and they kind of just stay there and if you look at the frame time charts it does does get aggressively intense as the game progresses. And this really carried over through multiple different rounds and in general was a surprising regression in terms of performance. And I really can't explain why it is. Both are running on the exact same graphics driver, just one installed in Windows 10 and the other one installed in Windows 11. So there could be some performance regressions within the game itself in relation to Windows 11. And that's something that we do have to keep in mind because we are using hardware that was essentially not optimized for Windows 11. So that might have something to do with this, but we can't really know for sure. All we can really measure consistently is that there are some performance differences and not exactly in the direction we wanted to see. But let's move on to the next game. So the next game on our list is Dota 2. And here you can see it running on both systems with the lowest in-game graphic settings, but we do have 100% render resolution. In general, there seems to be a minor improvement in performance, mostly in the 1% lows and a little bit in the averages, but it's nothing too drastic. Nothing Nothing that's really going to make the overall experience seem noticeably better in either direction. So while there is some form of a measurable improvement, don't expect this to be an overall game changer. It's just a nice to have, but I would find that most people are really going to struggle to even notice a difference between these two different experiences here. So in general, it's mostly a tie. It is a win, but it is a minor one, but at least this time around, we're not seeing a regression in performance. Now the third most played game on Steam right now is actually a relatively new title we do have hogwarts legacy here running on both systems again same exact driver the only difference being that one is running on windows 10 and the other one is running on tiny 11 and in general the performance is very similar between the two of them they are both at the lowest graphics settings with fsr set to performance mode on both of them there are minor improvements in the averages and the one percent lows but nothing drastic and nothing that would fundamentally change the overall experience on either one of them so in general i would say that this is pretty much a tie at best. Now at number four was actually a surprise to me. We're looking at Lost Ark running on both systems, both with the lowest in-game graphics settings. And in general, Tiny 11 did see a minor improvement in 1% lows, though our averages stayed around the same range, but that does mean that there is no major fluctuation or anything like that between the two. Where the original Windows install would see dips into the 20s, Tiny 11 is keeping the 1% lows above 30 pretty consistently. So this is a far more noticeable improvement though again nothing drastic and now we move on to apex legends now this one was an interesting one because it seems to have actually gotten a minor improvement mostly in the one percent lows though the averages did see a little bit of a bump but what's interesting is that sometimes throughout the experience of playing there would be these moments where there would be these spikes in the frame times it's like there was a pretty noticeable dip if you notice to the power usage and that causes this lag experience but then things were and if you look at the frame time charts, they look far better in comparison to the Windows 10 version. It's just that these spikes that end up kind of just dropping the 1% lows would happen every once in a while that would overall ruin the experience sometimes. So it's an odd situation where the frame times and the performance do seem noticeably better, but those harder stops, those harder lag spikes actually end up making it pretty difficult to play sometimes. So it's a little bit of a tough one here to say really which one is better than the other.
And moving on to the next game, we do have PUBG running on both systems here with the lowest in-game graphics settings and the render resolution set to 70%. In general, you can see that the level of performance between the two of them is mostly comparable. It really just depends on where exactly on the map you are. But in general, the performance between the two setups is practically identical. There is not going to be really any measurable difference between the two. So no real noticeable regression in performance, but really no improvement either. Though considering some of the games that we've seen so far that already is a better outcome though again we're not seeing any massive gains like we've seen before testing tiny 11 on the 5500u and moving on to the next title we do have team fortress 2 in general there doesn't really seem to be that much of a performance difference between the two averages and one percent lows are going to depend on what is happening on the screen at that moment but after playing multiple games on each system in general the performance is almost identical doesn't really go one way or the other but in general the performance is at least decent on both. Rust had a far more noticeable improvement in performance here overall, where our 1% lows were doing slightly better, though our averages remained around the same range. But that what this did mean is that we had an overall more consistent experience. And for a game like Rust, it actually did end up making the experience noticeably better, specifically because now we had our 1% lows a lot closer to what our FPS average is actually like. But it's not going to make your overall experience drastically better. It's not going to boost you to a whole nother level of gaming experience or anything like that so in general it is a nice boost but nothing dramatic gta 5 online ended up seeing a improvement in one percent lows though our averages were noticeably different between the two now both are running with all of the graphics settings set to normal or turned off and they are at the full 1080p resolution and what ended up happening is that overall the difference between the two was pretty noticeable the one percent lows were pretty noticeably improved though our averages seem to have regressed somewhat. In general, the experience on Tiny11 is nicer overall because of the much lower gap between our 1% lows and our averages. Though depending on what exactly was happening on screen, it would also exhibit the exact same drop in power that we saw with Apex Legends. So there would be a moment of stutter, but then it would recover pretty quickly from there. So overall better performance though, some odd inconsistencies here and there, and it really seems like the older titles are having some issues with Windows 11 in comparison to Windows 10. And lastly, we're going to be taking a look at Call of Duty Warzone 2 running on both of these systems with the lowest in-game graphics settings and FSR set to the performance preset. Now, our averages re remain around the exact same range for the most part, but our 1% lows do see a nice bump in overall FPS, but it's really not enough to improve the experience enough to make this a legitimately playable experience. 1% lows in the teens is still not great, though it is a vast improvement over 1% lows in the single digits. But no noticeable improvement in the FPS average and our 1% lows still being in the teens means that overall it's just not a great experience. It's improved but it's not amazing and in general I don't really think for most people it's going to push you over the edge on wanting to play the game on this system or not. Both experiences are going to be pretty much mediocre across the board that you're better off just playing something else. So what's the conclusion here? Well for the most part it really seems like Tiny11 has a lot of drawbacks and not really as big a performance gains across the board as you would hope to see. Now again, we are using a system that was not designed for Windows 11. Windows 10 is what this was optimized for. And it really seems like the move over to Windows 11 brought with it enough issues that I would say that this is not worthwhile. And it's disappointing to see because Windows 10 does have a expiration date. We are only a couple of years away from it just no longer receiving updates. Windows 11 is going to be a more far longer term solution. So being able to actually install it on here and use a version that is lightweight enough to really take advantage of the hardware that is in here would have been nice to see. But unfortunately, I just cannot recommend using Tiny11 on a system like this. That being said, there are cut down versions of Windows 10 that are very similar to Tiny11. And we can actually take a look at those soon and see if that actually has an improvement over just using the stock Windows 10 that it comes with. So stay tuned for that and be sure to subscribe. I will catch you guys in the next one.